Oh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another massive edition of Tuesday Night Live, brought to you by the team at Crowcast, and it's another cast of thousands with us tonight. We have Donkey Magoo. How you going, Donk? A lot colder than what you are. Yeah, I've got <laughs> sweat dribbling down the back of my knees at the moment. It's fantastic. Yeah. Very good. We got Nikki. How you going, Nick? I'm going well. Back Very... for another round. Very good. We've got the return of Macca. How are you going, Mac? Well, I've risen from the dead. I'm <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, no, we're... very uh, good to be back, mate. Sorry, very... Phoenix is Phoenix. Phoenix. Very, very good to have you back, mate. And, of course, Peter J. How are you going, Peter? Good, mate. Good luck controlling this rebel tonight. But, yeah. uh, yep, going pretty well. <laughs> I'm just going to set it on autopilot <laughs> and go and do something else while you guys rabble on for two hours. <laughs> All right. Speaking of rabbling on. So should, we just, should we start with the SNFL now? Let's just get into the news, shall we? Go for it, Pete. Well... Yeah, thanks, mate, and uh, a big hello to DSG, who just said hello to everyone on the chat. Um, yeah, the news is obviously dominated by the uh, the sandfall, and I guess we'll we'll get to that, and everybody that uh, follows football in this state will know all about that story and plenty to chat about there. Um, not a lot of um, uh, Adelaide Crows news, although just came through, I think it was a little bit earlier today, that... Um, the big captain, Tex Walker, is uh, has announced a, uh, uh, an arrival on the way and so a potential father-daughter um, uh, recruit there for the Crows. So uh, congratulations um, to, uh, to Tex on, uh, on the announcement of uh, the pregnancy. So that was, uh, that was a nice and little Ellie. bit of news from the club. And Ellie, yep, congratulations to them. Um, so that was really the main news. There's a little bit of goss floating around. Uh, with, with McGovern, there were some seven uh, news reports just in relation to potential trades, firstly with Carlton, and then also there was a subsequent news report that um, potentially has him going to the Gold Coast. So I don't think anyone really knows, uh, but uh, there's certainly plenty of scuttlebutt and speculation going around at the moment. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the Crows. It's been pretty quiet. And uh, the rest of the course has been uh, trade speculation, and, uh, and various news and some of the uh, the big movers and shakers. Uh, uh, I think we talked last week about Lockie Neal going up to Brisbane and uh, just in the last couple of days there's been sort of uh, uh, some whispers breaking about Chad Wingard heading to the Western Bulldogs. Um, so that's uh, that's one to watch, I think, in terms of big names moving. Yeah, do we um, think Wingard's fishing or do we think he's just uh, uh, really seriously looking for a, for a move? Oh, I think he... I think he's probably looking. Uh, it, it it smacks a little bit of what they did with Hamish Hartlett last year, as to shop him around and with the effect of giving him a big uh, kick up the bum because no one was ever going to pay the trade price that they wanted because he was under contract. And it has a little bit of a sniff of that. Although I don't think from memory, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but I can't remember him being linked to a club. Um, but uh, in the yeah. way that Wingard has been in the last couple of days, they're talking about offers being made and Jackson Trengove being um, um, called in to, uh, to, tr- to try and work with him because they had a relationship previously at Port Adelaide, of course. So um, it looks to me like there's a little bit of uh, uh, substance to it. Mm. Well, they well, we know, we know about... there's pressure on the salary yeah. cap at Port. Oh, you reckon that... Well, I don't know. Uh, the... They're talking about get a pick six from uh, from the Bulldogs for uh, Wingard. He's not. He's not a pick six. No, they he's don't just... get a pick six. So they want a lot going back to the Bulldogs for that. And I don't. I don't even think that they pay that because he's really in the last couple of years fallen away from his original. Um, to, you know, his uh, initial couple of years in the All Australian team. So just he's like, fallen away a bit. Just taking the piss a bit, Pete. It might be part of the uh, new game plan for Port Adelaide. You know, get rid of. Uh, uh, the two guys that can kick to, kick to a teammate, and uh, everybody else just kicks wildly there, don't they? and they just uh, kick chaos balls every ball. So, Mate, can you uh, touch upon the two? And of course, uh, I didn't uh, neglect to mention that. Uh, of course, uh, Jared Pollock came out and announced his wish for a trade to uh, uh, to North Melbourne. Oh, Pete, 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 Pete. Where did everyone go? and they would have been bitterly disappointed with their performance this year. And so maybe they're looking to um, 
have a slight refurbishment of that list uh, with a couple of big names going out to try and get up to that draft that uh, that we so desperately want to get into as well. I, I think they're set up to crumble in a big way. I reckon that they've traded in too many not good enough pieces and they've uh, and they don't have the youth because they've traded away picks over the last you know the first round picks over the last few years. And so they're gonna they're gonna find a spot where they're gonna be trading in kids that not ready yet. And they're going to have a bunch of old blokes that can't play and they're going to have a list that crumbles through the middle. I reckon they're going to bottom in the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, Kane Corn's problem... talking about Aaron Hall being the next piece of the puzzle. Jeez. Yeah. He's the next piece of the puzzle. You've got the wrong puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they always seem to be. Um, they get all these puzzle pieces, but I don't think they're all for the same puzzle. You're spot on there, Pete. I mean... The, We've kind of seen how they've had to trade players out for almost a fire sale and then pay their salary because they were on over salaries at Port that other clubs were not willing to pay for these players. So it's poor list management and it's poor recruiting on behalf of Port. I mean, it's an absolute mess. And I think Donkey's pretty much got a spot on there that they're going to fall in a big heap. Well, we've touched on it before, haven't we? Um, you know, it's hard to work out what they're actually doing over there. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're right, Donkey. I wouldn't mind uh, betting that they do drop off the cliff a little bit in the next couple of years. they got a long way back, I reckon. So what does Koshy do then? Well, he'll be gone by then. You reckon? Yeah, well, I mean, his job was always to, uh, you know, right the ship financially and get a bit of a profile for them and all the rest of it. Um, his, his work there will be done. But they're, they're not. They're, in my understanding, they're not uh, breaking even at the moment. Well, I wouldn't know about that. Well, they, you know, they lost a, lot, a fair bit of money on that uh, stupid bloody Chinese exercise that they've got. And most of that, they normally get kickbacks from the government. No, but that was. I'm talking about after all the kickbacks they got paid into them. My understanding is they lost close to half a mil on that. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. But we had this discussion last week, and it, I mean, it's pertinent, and it's um, it relates to Port Adelaide, Geelong um, teams that you know um, have um, supporter bases that need to be engaged pretty constantly with winning football, and and so that they both teams seem to be engaged. There was there was a third team too, I think we were talking about, wasn't there? Rafina, North, are, North are another one that are very like that as well because they have possibly, such a small supporter base. Possibly no, they just can't afford. These teams cannot afford to uh, to be bottling you out, and because they just they lose so much, and so they seem to be engaged in a, a merry-go-round of picking up established players to try and keep themselves at a at a certain level. And we all know Porter at a level where they're far better than you know the bottom three, four, five teams, um, as they consistently prove by smashing them. Um, and that gives the uh, you know the plaudits from the fans, but um, they just don't seem to be able to construct a list that's going to take them into the top four. They haven't been able to do that for God knows mm. how long. And Geelong seem to be on the same path. Yeah, Geelong were the ones um, that we compared to Port last week. And, and you're right, Pete, they do seem to be on the same path, in my opinion. I, I think they've dug themselves into a big hole chasing a flag. Is any um is any news on um Luke Dowhouse? Is he is he going anywhere or resign? I'd I'd love to get him, but not a lot of other people might uh, crash out on him. Where Geelong would you play him? Got him. Yeah, no, Geelong, Geelong apparently got him. Yeah, because the AFL came out with the ruling that um, Geelong are allowed to trade away. They ask permission um, that they are allowed to trade away their first round draft pick, whereas every other club's going well. They've they've done it for the past number of years, which means they're not allowed to trade it out this year. And now they've convinced our house. So they've turned around to the AFL and go, can we please trade out our pick one again in spite of all the rules that you kind of put in place and are just a guideline? Yeah, but yeah, see, they've this absolutely undermines the entire system because other clubs make decisions yeah. based on what other clubs do. So you look at, you look at the draft positions or the trading yeah positions or the currency that each club has and then you you make your plans accordingly so if Geelong can just come in over the top that they've already flouted the rules uh with regards to to uh their picks and and now they've just been giving a handout it, it, they may as well be getting a priority pick because that's what it boils down to 
the fact that they can trade in a first uh, use a first round pick to trade in a player is equivalent to being given a you know a first round priority pick in in the draft it's just ridiculous come on guys liven up um <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the S N F L, shall we? Yeah, what happened in it? Well, what happened was <laughs> that uh, North were four hundred goals down. They came back. Um, they were still a bit down at three quarter time, and then they started the Any last boys? quarter with uh, an extra man on the field for the first four or five minutes. Kick one goal, three in that time, and uh, despite some protest uh, by certain officials to uh, the interchange steward and the emergency umpire. Um, they weren't sanctioned during the game. They went on to win it. Um, and then after deliberation by the SNFL tribunal, it went to over five hours last night. Uh, they've just been fined 10 grand and docked uh, four premiership points. So two games, two wins in the 2019 season. I'll go around the mm. table. Pete, what do you reckon about that? Oh, look, I was uh, engaged in some chat uh, online today and really my thought was that, is that legally um, the, the, the process which they went through and the decision which um, was arrived at um, I thought was pretty sound. Um, morally and in a football sense, you know, you, you couldn't possibly be happy about North playing in that final uh, on Sunday. I think that they, um, they fully deserve to uh, have the game taken off them. With that said, um, I, I thought it was a um, for, for all the criticism that they copped. I thought it was a sound process that the um, sample engaged in, and um, um, I read um, Michael David's reasons statement of reasons. It really was more of a press release, and I'm sure that somewhere buried deep within the bowels of uh, Sandful House uh, is the um, the full statement of reasons uh, with reference to all the various rules. Um, but the little uh, bite that he put out for the press, um, I read. And um, I think that if you marry that up with the actual rules, I, I think that he didn't, I think he's right, he didn't have many places to go. Um, and so I think it, legally it was, it was uh, you know, it was a sound decision. Donkey? Um, well, it's just exciting, firstly, that North Adelaide are embracing the Crows and they're playing with the 19th man. I think that should be something that's applauded. <laughs> but um, uh, look, on a. I sort of, I've gone 360 on this one. I originally thought, well, they cheated. They got the win. That's not right. They shouldn't be there. But um, then I started, I, I wasn't watching the game. So other people that did can probably say say different things. But if uh, North came back from that far back and they had all the momentum and they were kicking the goals and all that sort of stuff, you know, did that have a material effect on actually the game? Like, did that actually change the game? I don't know the answer to that. And um, and whether it was intentional or not, I think, which is what the judge um touched on whether it was intentional or not, I think is is a bit of a mitigating factor as well. So um, it's it, it was just such a, a, a clusterfuck of a, of a situation that I don't think there was any right outcome to that. Like there's, I think people would have felt aggrieved no matter what happened and I think all people should feel aggrieved and it just it's just a situation that shouldn't be allowed to happen at a you know semi-professional level of sport when there should be people around watching all that sort of stuff, you know, just out of control. Nick? I didn't didn't watch it, but um, because Sandown was on, but um, just reading all the kerfuffle and everything else, and looking at afterwards, th there was some really good um discussion. I did like uh, Pete did delve into the rules, and there does still seem to be a bit of a grey area around it that I think the Eagles quite rightly can feel a, a little bit aggrieved about. Um, but they really that the, that poor tribunal chairman he was really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, I didn't quite like his statement though, that to overturn the game would result would have been like too much of a punishment. Um, Cause it's, it is a, a very iffy one. It was interesting though, because I'm thinking back and I was watching when I watched the South North game, there was a period of time in that, that every time South was kicking, um, actually got the ball and started to kick it forward. That there always seemed to be that extra man, but um, 
that North had, and yet they always seemed to be manned up on everybody else. It was I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, but I didn't like the North CEO's initial response. Thought that was a a, a little bit arrogant, um, and he should have pulled his head in. Their their later statements were a lot better. Um, heat of the moment, though. Yeah, it was heat of the moment. But if if you're in that kind of position, you you still should, you know, you need to behave that a little bit better. Um, There's a lot of fence sitting going on here. Nikki, come on. Give me a definitive. I, I quite like what Macca had actually suggested was take away the score during that time period that he was on the, the ground for because it did influence the game. You, right. you can't say it, it didn't. All right, Macca. What do you reckon? Right. Well, there's no bloody fence in here, I can tell you. Um, <laughs> As an Eagles actually, man, of course. Uh, well, that's a, yes, I am an Eagles man, but also I'm a person who believes in justice. I'm a person who believes in fairness. And uh, what a heap of bullshit this has been. Pete was 100% right. It was done legally. And that's about the only thing I think you can give it. Because uh, this, this SNFL, their handling of the whole fiasco has been an absolute disgrace and it shows them to be the bloody mob of amateurs they really are. Let's start right from when it first happened. There's 19 men out on the ground. Uh, Woodville West Torrens, they make, uh, they, they report, they do tell the fourth umpire about it. They tell some other officials about it, the interchange guy. Nothing done whatsoever by their same girl. And I mean, if they should have actually, the fourth umpire should have called out to the uh, his fellow umpires and asked them to stop the game. And had a count that because this old, this bullshit about the old fashioned about the captain that was all right in the days when you used to uh, have one umpire and uh, the, the interchange players uh, were, you didn't have interchange players you only had reserves once they came on they couldn't come back in and out over the game so that rule is just so old fashioned it's not funny but then secondly uh, then it took the SAFL two days to get a decision two bloody days um, I mean. One thing was absolutely clear. There was no doubt. There was no dispute. North Adelaide had 19 men on the ground. They had 19 men on the ground. There's no dispute about that. And Nicky made a reference to it. You could just see these, these loose guys bobbing up loose all the time. You're thinking, that, they're not manning up. Who's not manning up? Well, that's exactly what the uh, uh, coach of the Woodville West Times was thinking. He was wondering, who's supposed to be we're manning up, but they're still loose men. And he even, he even dismantled his own back line and brought one of them down there into the forward line, trying to man up on everybody. Um, on Sorry, the other way around, from the forward line into the, the back line. Um, so it had a ma- it did have a major because it gave, um, although they'd, they'd finished very, very well, North Adelaide, at the end of the third quarter, but you have a break and you do lose your momentum. And, mm. that, and having this ability to have a loose man... Uh, it got them going again, and it gave them the, the dominance, and it gave them the momentum. So it did have, a major, in my opinion, a major effect on the game. When you consider it was only a five-point game in the end, and uh, they scored eight points in, uh, when this was going on. Thirdly, they, the, the commission hasn't even got the balls to make their own decision. And they were just probably pooping themselves that somebody would have a crack at them legally. They can't run their own competition. So they called in the retired uh, Supreme Judge, uh, Michael David, and his judgment. North play in the grand final, even though they cheated, and in, under any circumstances, I mean, if they'd done a count, they would have lost their whole score and lost the game. They got fined $10,000 and they lose four match points. And he, and he said he couldn't tell with any certainty how much it affected the result. Although knowing that the North scored eight points while well, they had dining men on the ground. And I'll help you, Michael, eight bigger than five, which is what the margin, final margin was. So he couldn't do it, but I can do the match. So he makes the brilliant decision in favour of the cheaters. They're going to play in the grand final. And uh, so they're a winner, even though they cheated. And then you've got the SNFL. We'll have 10 grand. There's a nice little kicker for a minute. And then... Uh, and then the other thing he adds to it is a, a two-match uh, penalty, four points gone. 
And that's a nice little tra treat for the other teams in the comp next year who are not even involved in this bloody thing. So I just think his decision is an absolute disgrace. He admitted that he had the ability to overturn the result. And uh, what did he do? He said he wasn't sure. So he didn't do it. So all I can say is, and uh, poor old uh, Woodville West Torrens, who are the ones that were cheated against, they got absolutely nothing out of it other than the debt of having the high QCs, et cetera, et cetera. So from my point of view, uh, I think the the SAFL, SANFL, uh, you really are a mob of bloody amateurs. You're a mob of cowards. You actually should have done the right thing. North Adelaide cheated, not deliberately. I understand that. But that they are the rules. You can't play 19 men. You can't score eight points and just leave it there and say everything's okay. So that's my, my take on it. Yeah, I reckon there's, uh, and well said, Mac, uh, there's two sides to this, or two fa uh, elements to this. One is the, 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 the element of fairness, and the other one is the legal element. And uh, I don't think the two have met. Uh, I don't think the SANFL actually could have done much else, Macca, within the framework of their rules. And I think that the tribunal sitting was very much geared towards trying to minimise or mitigate um, litigation um, because yes, there's, there's no yeah, provision yeah, but... there's no provision in the SANFL constitution or rules yes to... there is 7.2 yeah what does yeah, it, it say them... though it says yeah, they, but... they had the right uh, to uh, of, uh, several things and one of them was reversing the result yeah but what, what you've got to look at Macker, and sorry I'll jump in here but what you've got to look at is that Michael David as a jurist is looking at that and he's applying um, his, um, his, he's, he's looking at the rules and he's looking at all of his experience and his, um, his experience at um, uh, uh, legislative interpretation. And the way that you have to look at that is that in 7.2, which is clearly the rule that they used, in 7.2 there is a number of penalties. There is a fine, there is the ability to reverse the result or they talk about in, yeah, another sanction. Um, and so clearly within that framework, there's no capacity to order another game, which is, he indicated, would, be, would have been the fairest outcome. But what you've got to look at is that when, you, when you've got an, a number of potential sanctions and you've got one that's quite clearly the most serious, then as it, when you're looking at it legally, that sanction that is most serious has to be reserved for the most serious offending. And then you and you work back, and so what he did is that he he couldn't find that there was deliberate cheating. Now, if he had found on the facts, and none of us have got the full facts, but what he found on the facts was that there was not deliberate cheating. Now, if there had have been deliberate cheating, then the then the most severe outcome would be reserved for the most severe conduct. But he had to, he that wasn't proven, and so what he had to do was he had to pull back from that maximum penalty. Um, because it wasn't the maximum offending, he found well, that it was gross negligence. If, and so then, I, um, he, then he's sorry, no, Pete. No, no, that, that that's the point that I'd make. Yeah, I'd, I can't agree with you. Well, Macca, the other thing I think from a legal standpoint is that North Adelaide didn't break a rule as such. If you if you think about it logically, they had too many players on the field, but. I think that they're, and Pete, you'd know this better than I would, but this is just the way that I've looked at it. Because protocol, and we can argue correctly that the, the laws in regards to how you report an extra player on the field are archaic and they're, and they're uh, written for another time and they needed to be updated. And as with a lot of laws, they don't get updated until they're tested. Um, but my view is because North Adelaide didn't, use the, the appropriate protocol to report the extra player, which was under the rules, the captain or acting captain reporting it to the, to the field umpire, then they would have had a they would have had a reasonable case had they decided had the tribunal found against them. They would have had a, a reasonable case in my opinion. Um, Pete you can you can say yay or nay. The Eagles you mean? The yeah. No, no, no. If if the tribunal if the tribunal had found for Eagles 
and overturn yep. the game, then I believe that North would have had a reasonably good case to mount in a court of law because mm. the Eagles didn't follow protocol as sta- as set out in the SANFL rulebook. So yeah, but the, he didn't he didn't find under the under that protocol. He didn't he didn't he didn't find under five point five point one. No, he found no, he under didn't. Seven point two. Yeah, Correct. and and um, that's Peter, where and that's and what I'm what I'm getting at, I guess, Pete, is that the only reason he did that is for the very reason that I'm saying that he had to seven point two is basically a misconduct situation, isn't it? Or yeah, for interchange interchange misconduct. Yeah. Did, so did they did they not did they ignore five, the five point five point one because it doesn't say the captain has to; it says the captain may. Is, is, they did ignore it. Is, they went to the is, seven point. No, 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 Can, Peter. Because uh, I know you quoted that. Is is that the right terminology that they actually use in that? Because if it's may instead of must, that actually opens up quite a grey area. Because no, it doesn't. Because it doesn't give you any alternative. Doesn't give you enough alternatives. It so basically says, says the captain. Like to, but doesn't but doesn't two down talk about the interchange steward, which seems to contradict that one? It's it. it they don't flow. I mean, and let's let's face it. Let's let's face it. Aside from the legal situation, and I, and I believe that the tribunal's ruling was made with with a, a very strong view towards possible litigation resulting. I agree. So, so let's leave that aside because that's fair enough. Uh, the SANFL want want to play their grand final on the day that it's scheduled. Imagine the nightmare if they didn't. So obviously they're trying to mitigate risk as much as possible. But let's look at it from from the 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 standpoint of what actually took place. If you're a North Adelaide player, or and I've I've heard a number of North Adelaide supporters ring up and say the same thing. If you're a North Adelaide player or supporter now, do you honestly believe that you deserve to be in the grand final? And will your win be tainted if you happen to get up against Norwood uh, in the grand final? We'll be tainted forever. There's no doubt about that. Because let's let's go back to it. There is no doubt that they that they committed that offence, and a, and, no, and nobody is suggesting they did it deliberately, but they did it. And the point is that if it wasn't for the most merest of technicalities they would have had their whole score wiped out yeah which is why I, that's what i say to pete is that the the magistrate that the magistrate the uh qc um, michael yeah, qc michael david he did have at his disposal the ability to reverse the result yes um, he did he did have that at his disposal but and, this, and what said. i'm saying what i'm saying pete is if it had been for a technicality they north would have had their score what North did would have had their score wiped out. So if he just even had just yep. applied on the fact that, yes, I can't apply that one, but I can actually say that if it was good enough there, it's good enough for under 7.2. I honestly reckon that if under 7.2, if he'd reversed the result, I reckon he would have been rolled on appeal. Yeah, I agree. And, and, North had, and, and, there, and there was... There was a tweet put out by Greg Edwards saying that they were they were already getting advice if the uh, hearing didn't go their way. There was so no they, appeals. There's no appeal to vote. There is no, in the court. Well, no, so. there's all, there's all, he can always go to, they can always go to the Supreme Court. They had yep, agreed they before. Inju- they can get an injunction. Injunction, they would have had, that would, they could have taken that to the Supreme Court. There was no other appeals left within the Sample structure. But they could have gone to the Supreme Court, and, and, and I believe that they would have, and I believe that Michael David would have been rolled. Because before, I think that before because that, they yeah, before that hearing, though, been, Pete, they'd agree, both Macca, sides agreed, and they wouldn't. Macca, to be fair, let's be fair, you're an Eagle supporter. So you're emotional and you're not looking at it from a, an objective viewpoint. And I say no, that with all due respect because you know I love you. But yeah. you're, you're upset and you're angry. <laughs> and I would be if it was Westies. But, um, the but can I... that David would have, he would have been rolled if that had gone to the Supreme Court because his exposure would have been the applied the maximum penalty, but it wasn't the, ma- the, 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 the most serious conduct. Yeah, but, but God's got to help me for saying this. But even if it had been Port Adelaide instead of would be all West Torrent, I'd be saying the same thing. Well, and I think this is the point that I was trying to make, Macca, that now you've got people who, who support North Adelaide, and, I, and I'm sure deep down in the North Adelaide players as well, that that are kind of, it's all a bit bittersweet, you know. North, It's been a fantastic run from North to, to, to make a grand final, um, and credit to them for, for being in it up to their necks. But if you were the SANFL... Uh, looking at it from a non-legal perspective, and I understand this is all hypothetical, 
then really the only outcome could have been uh, that the Eagles uh, would be playing Norwood in the grand final because as soon as soon as they decided that uh, there was a case to answer, then they're admitting, as Pete rightly pointed out, that there was, or that you rightly pointed out, Macca, that there was no question that there were 19 on the field. Now, as soon as you uh, uh, tip your hat to the fact that there were 19 on the field, then essentially what you're saying is that uh, despite the fact that proper communication wasn't wasn't uh, performed, in, you know, to get the umpire to, to do a head count, the simple fact is that everyone knew that there was 19 on the field and the, and the score should have been wiped. So... That is my point. Yeah, but so I think it it comes it comes down to two things. First of all, the rules should have been updated. But second of all, there hasn't been enough scrutiny, in my opinion, on the bloke who had control of that situation, which was the SANFL interchange, Stuart. Because ultimately, and the fourth umpire. Well, yeah, but ultimately, this is this is a dispute between inter- the Eagles yeah, an and North Adelaide. Issue. But this is actually a a uh, a failure by an SANFL official, and I'm wondering what, if any, action the Eagles can take against the SANFL directly, for you know, loss of income, blah blah blah, whatever, um, because it was one of their officials that caused this problem to occur in the first place. Well, that's what will happen next, Fane, and and. Um their CEO was on the radio tonight, and um, that's what they're, they're meeting. They're meeting tonight, and they'll decide. He said within the next twenty four hours about taking legal action against the Sandful for um, uh, for lost income. And, and I think that they, I think you're absolutely spot on. I think that um, they have it. They, they would have a case um, just on the face of things. You would think that they would have a case because apparently the CEO who was at um, Powell, he, he was the runner at the time as well. And he went up to the fourth umpire, and at that point, because they realised it quite late in the piece, the North player was coming off the ground. Mm. And apparently, what he said on the radio today was that the umpire said to him, "Well, don't worry, there's only going to be a fine anyway, so there's nothing you can really do." Correct. Mm. And that's not. So what should have happened is that fourth umpire should have stopped that player coming off the field. Yeah, or at least identified him, which he still could have done. Or identified. Yeah. Him, and then and then said, "Right, you go. I've." Identified and um, uh, you go and tell your captain you want to take account. Yeah. So they're, they're absolutely spot on there that there are things that could have been done at that point. I, I guess my follow-on to that then, Pete, is that if the Eagles were to take the SNA field to court, and I don't know whether there's any uh, any opportunity for them to uh, apply for an injunction uh, that the, the result of the, the game be set aside. Um. As far as I can see, it would be possible for the if if the SANFL were were deemed to have affected the result of the game, then it would be possible for the Supreme Court to strike strike out the result of that match, which would then result in the match needing to be replayed anyway. Well, they wouldn't. I, I really don't believe that the Eagles would go down the path of an injunction because, um, I mean. You know, all parties would want a massive amount of money paid into court for that injunction to to cover. Mm. You know, if uh, if their case doesn't get up, and mm. you can imagine the amount of money lost if they have to move the grand final. So the Eagles would be forced to secure to secure that with a payment, and I just don't think that they'd have it. And I don't think that they they would have done ten grand in the last two days. Yeah, um, yeah. and I, I don't think a club like that would have the money. That, this is not even looking at. So when you apply for an injunction, you know, if there's a potential loss of co- of um, uh, of money on the side being injuncted, which would be SNFL, you have to, as the applicant, you have to guarantee that you're capable of paying for that loss. And right. so quite often what will happen is the court would say, right, well, the, the sandfall, if I was arguing for the sandfall, I'd say, look, if I, we've got to move that grand final, we could potentially lose you know, $500,000. And so the court might say to the Eagles, well, you've got to at least dump up $100,000 before you can have this injunction. Yeah. So it's more likely that they'll go down a civil uh, route in terms would, of compensation. They would just go down a, yep, absolutely. They would just go down a, a civil path um, and, um, and 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 sue them for uh, for damages, which I think that they, they quite possibly would have a good case. Yeah, it seems to me I would hope that they, it would be a case where they'd be able to talk to the SAFL who would uh, give them a reasonable amount in terms of uh, reimbursing for the costs they've incurred uh, so far and... Uh, and perhaps a little bit on top of that because of, uh, of the fact that they're not paying the grand final. I, I don't want to see uh, 
um, fortunes ripped out of the SAFL. Um, look, there was, there was a decision uh, made. Both sides went to it. Uh, they both agreed that they would abide by it. And uh, while I, I think that the uh, guy chickened out on putting the right decision into place, and, um, I do I think it's been put down, so it has to be accepted. And uh, but I do think that there should be a negotiation between uh, Woodville West Torrens and the SAFL, and uh, that they they should be receive some form of money. Now, Macca, just to, to throw a little spanner in the works. So in the NEFL grand final, held on the same day, Southport Sharks are playing Sydney. Start of the last quarter, Southport are up by 10 goals. They have 19 men on the field. They start playing with 19 men on the field. It is actually the game is stopped. They do the head count. They discover there's 19 men. There, I think, was then like a 20-minute break that was going on because the officials at the ground didn't know how to treat it as to whether it was under the AFL rules, which is the NFL is run by the AFL, is that the score would be white, which you've kind of quoted, or whether it's an interchange breach, which is the free kick um, 30 metres out in front of goal, etc. So they had to call the AFL in Victoria to figure out what to do regarding this. And the AFL's response back goes, it's just an interchange. So, so they actually classed it as an interchange breach. So oh, instead man. of the Swans winning, and the players at the end of the game didn't actually know whether who had won or lost. And yet, but when the I AFL ran, know what was going on. When the AFL ran the uh, the SANFL situation through their model, supposedly they came up with a, a score wipe situation. I think the other difference in the AFL rules is that there's, there's actually uh, discretionary powers. In, in the AFL rules, yeah. the umpire does have discretion, whereas in the SANFL rules, it's black and white. So there's a, And I think that was one of the reasons why um, there was a, a period of deliberation as to how that was going to be treated because obviously Southport were, was smacking the other team. Yeah. Um, and uh, but but they started with they started exactly the same as what North Adelaide did. Yeah, no, no, started no, no, the I, final quarter with uh, yeah. bed on the field. Yeah, no, I understand that. What I'm saying is that the the rules surrounding that are different, uh, and it includes yes, they are. Dis- includes discretionary powers uh, of the umpire. And I think there was a certain amount of negotiation between the two clubs uh, that that fed into that final decision or that final ruling about it being an interchange uh, breach rather than a. Because, I mean, it can't be one without the other. If you've made an interchange breach which mm. has resulted in you having 19 players on the field for a period of time and it's brought to the umpire's attention, then you can't have it both ways. You've got to apply the rule that there's too many players on the ground. So um, that's where that discretionary power that sits within the AFL rules comes into play. But it's kind of funny that it, with the two different rules, but they've actually both in the SNFL and this one in the, in the NEFL, they both use the interchange breach as that overriding principle. Can yeah. I just give uh, really quickly, can I just give one quick shout-out? Um, I've uh, just been just following before the chat. You, Just before you do, Peter, I've just got one more thing to say to Macca with regards to all of this, and we do feel for him and all the Eagles supporters out there. Sure. But in the end, it doesn't matter because the Eagles always choking grand finals anyway, mate, Because so you're never going to win anyway. <laughs> yeah. so well, it they just haven't, won, saved they haven't you. made a grand final for Saved you a bit of heartache, I reckon. Sorry, Fiend. I was going to say, they haven't made a grand final for years, have they? <laughs> Look, it, it doesn't worry me one way or the other, believe it. I believe it. Uh, and um, because I think Nord and Nord are going to win, we're going to win it anyway. I think so. That's, so we that, certainly hope so. And, yeah, well, and now the thing everyone is, will though, I, I was just more angry though, about the principle the whole thing. Oh, no, and I agree with you, Mac. It's a, it's a damn shame. Even though. Even though people have been talking about how this game is now going to be tainted, et cetera, because of the way North got in. But aren't there issues with Norwood regarding salary cap breaches, the fact that they've had a, a player that's been done on a water? I, I think this whole grand final, unfortunately, for both from both teams' point of view, there's going to be little asterisks next to yeah. either name, really. Yeah, I don't think any Norwood flags actually count. Well, Nord have always are pretty close to the wind when it comes to salary cap, and they've been done for breaches in the past. And you know, uh, the SNFL need to smarten up because uh, they need a rule, a rewrite of their rule book. I think. I mean, they do some things well. I think the SNFL, but I think uh, 
a bit like the crows uh they're a bit frayed around the ed- edges when it comes to to having appropriate frameworks in place i think sometimes i just uh finger in the wind and see how it goes the times that this was done, I thought the SAFL handled this one so per- poorly, you would have thought that bloody Burton organised the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, so never mind. Uh, we'll all be barracking for Norwood next week, I think, including probably the SANFL. Um, and uh, hopefully they can clean up the mess in the off season and get things uh, a little bit more ship shape in the SANFL. What were you going to say? A bit of a shout out, Pete? I was just going to give a shout out. I've noticed on the chat tonight, Froggy is uh, with us. I haven't seen Froggy on the chat before and um, obviously uh, as we all know, uh, Big Footy Royalty is Froggy, so good to have him along. <laughs> he and is indeed. I, d- I do like his suggestion that could Norwood try putting 17 on the field to make it look like North have 19. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> very, a very, very Froggy thing to say. Oh, very good. <laughs> well done, Frog and a blender. Alright, we actually had some matches go on uh, over the weekend so let's have a chat about them, shall we? Epic finals coming up. Uh, who watched what on the weekend and what did you think? Well, um, which, which game are we going to start with? All right, well, I'll we just start, start off the, by the, the fact that... I don't know one. I'll start off with the fact that I was the only one to pick both winners. Um... <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, tip my hat there, Fiend. I had, I had two losses, so... <laughs> I, it's not often. I, I got one. It's not often I can I can say that. So, uh, look, I and, thought. And to be, to be fair, Phoenix, I actually I only said Hawthorne because I said it was more likely that Melbourne were going to win, but I was tipping Hawthorne just in the hope for a, a draft pick. Well, uh, the simple fact is, Nikki, that when asked, you said Hawthorne. <laughs> um, I can right. make one one observation. One observation that I because I, I watched both games. And I just, um, I, this whole thing of, you know, what a wonderful, exciting, um, glittering um, team Melbourne are. And I, I reckon it's a bit of a fraud because I reckon, we've, and we've observed this before, Fane, we, throughout the year we've observed the fact that they are, a, you know, a burst team. Mm. And I reckon what you, that all of those um, superlatives that are being banded around for Melbourne at the moment are true for generally around about a quarter of the game. Mm. Mm. Rest mm. of the rest of the game, they're as boring as batshit. It's uh, just hideous. a scrap. It oh. is, it, they they have woeful be, skills at time for some really high draft pick. Absolutely horrendous. So it's almost as though they, they do, I don't know whether it's strategic or whatever, but it is, it is they have this burst and get themselves a few goals in front and, then, and it's just horrendous football for the rest of the game. And, and, and actually, I think completely contrary to what, a lot of people seem to be saying buying the bluff based upon you know 20 25 minutes of football they are horrendous to watch mm. i think pete yeah, pete's raised an excellent point there because they they do win their games in bursts there's no doubt about it and uh, it's just only that hawthorne weren't good enough for the rest of the game because they did have opportunities i mean gunson he, he butchered about what three or four go- shots for goal where you would normally expect him to kick you know, what about that one running in for goal? At, uh, I think it was in the last quarter and a crucial shot for goal at that. And if the, if he'd got that, I think that the Melbourne would have gone under because, uh, you know, all the momentum was with Hawthorne and Gunston by hitting the post there, he just reversed it. Well, let's not forget that Melbourne is a team built on defence um, and they don't have a lot of class. They've got Clayton Oliver, um, Brayshaw in patches, although he's just a... a, a a, a gutsy, bullocking kind of player. They don't have a huge amount of class in that team. Um, and as I mentioned last week, Pete, they don't get behind by much, so they're always in in the game. And you know, under those circumstances, I guess that only takes ten minutes of uh, of uh, mm. brilliance or you know a bit of open play, and and they can pack it on pretty quickly. I I was pretty disappointed by Hawthorne. I think they uh, really felt their omissions um, in that game. I I felt like they were down on personnel and uh, missing a couple of key blokes, and I don't think that helped them at all. And Clark, I think if, if, the, if they uh, had Stratton, McDonald wouldn't got off the chain, and he was that real. He was that burst player. Yeah, because well, Hawthorne were undersized in the back lines, and he was able to get away. Yeah, 
Like, I actually think Hawthorne would have won the game if they had Stratton. Yeah, Simple well, Clarkson, as that. Clarkson admitted uh, in his press or post match that uh, they weren't batting terribly deep in their squad at the moment. Um, you know, there's a couple of blokes playing that had only played a handful of games. Uh, that Irish bloke, I think it was only the second game of Aussie Rules football, wasn't it, in, in the big league? So, you know, um, they were probably down a bit. And they probably did as well as they could do this season in retrospect, Hawthorne. Um, and Melbourne, obviously, um, lived to fight another day, although I reckon West Coast in Perth will be a bridge too far, but we'll get, that, get to that in a minute. The surprising result, I thought, was... Uh, the Collingwood match, uh, there were times when the Giants... I, I was watching that game fairly closely and there was times when I thought the Giants were just going to rip that game away from Collingwood. But to Collingwood's, so credit, yeah. but to Collingwood's credit, they just hung in and hung in and they're real smoky. Well, yes, the, they said they're playing an attractive brand of football, Collingwood. I reckon they, they're playing the most attractive football of all the teams left. In, yeah. the, uh, in the finals, they, um, they're they a really, really good team to watch. There's no doubt about that. Very honest and very and accountable. They are, but they also have class on every line. Uh, I think if you actually look at it, they've got some really good players on every line. So they, they've got that nice, even spread. And my God, still side bottom. The, the way he is just able to take that little step sideways and just create space he, he only has to get 25 possessions but he does so much damage with that so you have a tom mitchell who gets over 40 possessions and you've got still side bottom who does the 25 i'd take still side bottom any day of the week yeah well, i think there are three things there or maybe four things um i mean grundy in ruck is he's, he is outstanding and he's uh the best ruckman i've seen for many many a day because he's not just a ruckman He's a midfielder as well. He just he, he, he can scramble for the ball on the ground, makes position, runs all around the ground. Uh, still side bottom you mentioned. He was out, absolutely outstanding. To go up uh, in the forward lines, he just got off the chain all the time. Um, I thought Trelaw, he really, uh, I was amazed that he played so well after being out for so long. I thought he, he, was, he was excellent. And uh, as PJ points out, uh, the Giants got a crook old raw prawn from the umpire. I mean, oh, were, at times, yeah, absolutely. At, and at times, they were murdered by the umpires. You know, I can think of two frees right in front of goal that they should have got great big wrenches around the neck that, that weren't paid. And then, then in turn, I can think of two goals that Colin we got where they were two fingers on their hips and they got a goal. Uh, there, there also were, there, there was actually a poor umpiring performance all around because there are a couple of absolute head high rip rips that happened to Collingwood players in their forward line that weren't paid, but that's when they were up a little comfortably. So there were some other instances the other way, unfortunately, in that game. Yeah, a couple of Jack Anthony's played the other way too. Yes, to, uh, absolutely. To Collingwood. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, but but you, what you were saying before, Pete, about how Melbourne are so horrible to watch. I turned off that last quarter. I just was not interested in watching. I was halfway through the third quarter going, do I turn this off or do I keep watching? I might have to talk about it. Oh, got to the end of the quarter and no, nah, I've got better things to do. Um, but any time Collie would have played this year as a neutral, I've tuned into their games because they do. They, they play that really attractive brand of football and it makes – and enjoyable to watch them play. Yeah. Um, so we're left with a couple of pretty uh, tantalising games. The Collingwood-Richmond game, they could get 200,000 of that game. Yeah, well, you know, the only limitation is the size of the ground, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the and, noise will be definitely... And fans are upset, fans are upset about that uh, because there's... Um, what is it, the AFL members of the two actual clubs could um, have missed out on tickets to that preliminary final because there's AFL members of other clubs got in quicker than they did. Yeah, I didn't think there was an AFL members allocation um, in the pre-grand final finals. Yeah, but, That's uh, first, yeah. It's first in, first serve. Yeah, there is. I've seen a lot of people complaining about it on social media. Yeah, there is. There's a... Well, what are they? Um, members of the the MCG ground or something like that? Is that yeah, okay. what it is, Pete? I, I don't know. Yeah, with with a, with a club affiliation. 
So yeah, the AFL members. Yeah, the AFL members. You have a club affiliation, and what they're saying is is that basically all of the AFL Collingwood and Richmond members um, should have had dibs on tickets. But what's been happening is, you know, you might have an affiliation. You, you know, you, you might be an AFL Geelong member, and you know they're, they're getting tickets. So there's yeah, kind of right, a, okay. Oh, uh, well, but, you never know, mind. Crimey River. Yeah, I was going to say, nice problem to have. Um, look, anyone think Collingwood can get up over Richmond? No. I don't think so, but I hope so. I think I'll end up barracking for Collingwood. There's something... Yeah, I don't know. It's something I'll be barracking for Collingwood. Before. It's a strange feeling. Um, <laughs> <enjoying> <laughs> Richmond, but but they're a likeable team at the moment. I agree with that. It's, 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 not, it's nearly but not quite like bar- uh, barracking for Port. But... Um, you know, we don't do that too often. I just said um, they're playing good, honest footy, aren't they, Collingwood? Yeah. Mm, mm. But they, they're they worth watching. They really are worth watching. Yeah, they are. The one thing they try to do, they try to get a little bit of movement into the ball, but um, not necessarily chaos ball, but two positions. And uh, uh, I, I think some of the, you know, that sometimes their stuff's a little bit ambitious. But, um, yeah, they try, they're try they trying to play a pretty attractive brand, I reckon. Yeah, um, I don't think it's going to be as easy for Richmond as what many people think. I, I think this is, so far, every final we've had that's been a good game has featured Collingwood, and I think this is going to be the case again this time. I reckon it would almost be worth seeing Richmond roll just for Hardwick's presser afterwards. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> because, yes. Because his press conferences have been insufferable Aren't in the, they? In oh. the last half of this year. Absolutely insufferable with our arrogance. He's yeah, very smug, yeah. isn't he? Very, very smug. Smug and arrogant and, and you know, losing a um losing at the uh, at the doorstep uh, of the big dance would uh, would be, uh, it'd be when, worth when they've already been out. when they've already been anointed. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean so there, there, is, there would be a bit of fun. There there is a bit of doubt over Dusty's uh, fitness, apparently um David King coming out saying there's some sort of knee issue. Um, I, I can't. I think Collingwood will hang in for as long as they can, but uh, I, I can't see them beating Richmond. But I would love to no. see it as well. Um, I reckon Fiend, this, this will be one of those games, mate, where you'll say to yourself, "I can't possibly bear it for Collingwood," and then the ball will be bounced. Oh yeah, yeah. and you'll just you're I'm emotional. A, I'm already there. Oh, I, yeah, I, no, I, no, happily, no. I happily bear it for Collingwood whenever they play Port. <laughs> Yeah, well, at the moment I, I'm anti Richmond, so uh, I don't I don't mind who mm. beats Richmond uh, at the moment. Um, Me West Coast. Too. But, oh, sorry, Don. Oh. Go oh, I was just going to say I don't. I'm outside of the Adelaide bubble, so I have to deal with a lot of non Crow supporters or non you know Victorian supporters. I saw what you guys do too as well, but um, but I never heard of a Richmond supporter. There've been like one out of a hundred up here for the last 20 years and uh, and suddenly they're everywhere and they're telling oh. you how good they are and they're carrying on like they're better than, you know, they they, they got their chest puffed out more than Hawks supporters did after a three-peat. Yeah. Mate, you should have been should have walked around the show this year. Oh, they're, all, just... they're all just, they're all walking around the show, strutting around, wearing their bloody Tigers gear to the show. Well, you know what it is. Remember, it's, remember it's all Peter, the bloody Bay is... supporters that, that haven't won a flag for 100,000 years. <laughs> no, Peter, that's their good clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very that's salient just, point, Nicky. It's your Sunday best. Yeah. No, seriously, no. go to Victoria, watch them all walk around in the middle of the week with their footy gear on. And I'm like, oh, hang on. Yeah, I figured it out. It costs so much to buy that stuff. That is their good clothes. That's it. <laughs> I am. Um, I've, I've been, I mean, uh, I've been looking into my special Donkey Oracle ball that only I have access to, and I've been. <laughs> Swirling. I had no <laughs> idea where that was going for a minute. <laughs> and, is, it, uh, is that okay, looking man. at the donkey's is ass, is it? Or? Yeah. I thought he had a couple of them, actually, but go on, yeah. Don. <laughs> this, this is donkey has access to, Don. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, <laughs> and after I've had my green tea and oh, I pour it out and the things, I think I've just... Oh, uh, no. I can feel it in my bones that uh, that uh, the pies are going to get up this weekend. Um, I can just feel it. The, I feel like the... Uh, the Tigers have already won the flag in their minds. They've already they've already picked where they're going for their um, muck up day, and they're already doing all those sorts of things. And they're not actually ready for a force to come at them pretty hard. And I think the Pies are going to find something deep um, because uh, I just don't I just I just don't think they're good enough people to deserve two flags in a row. Yeah, uh, and Jay, congratulations, J Mac on the on the chat. Uh, he's just come, he's just anointed your tip of the week as the Donk Eye. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nicely done. West Coast Melbourne. Anyone give Melbourne a chance over there? 
Well, it's only going to be a half full stadium because haven't Melbourne supporters been buying up the tickets, but they're not going just because they don't want West Coast supporters to be sitting there? Yeah, I think it'll be a pretty close game, I reckon. I, I, no, I don't think so. I, I think because. Was that a year and no, think... <laughs> It's a proper Aussie year now. Um, I, I, I do think West Coast will have them over there, uh, very much so, because as Pete was saying, they're that burst kind of team. But that defense of West Coast is actually really good at defending those type of bursts, um, quite well. Um, so I, I think they Melbourne are very much going to get a very nice ride from the ump, seeing we've got Razor Ray getting over there already. Um, and you can already hear the commentators of how much they were getting excited about, you know, all those Victorian teams in the last round or whatever. It's like, dude, there's, there's another team over West, you know, they won, you know, 10 games in a row, et cetera, doing quite well into the finals. Uh, but they seem to have forgotten them. Um, I, I just think West Coast have that game plan and they have the quality of players to stop that kind of burst. Yeah, Coasters for me, for, you know, I think that the big difference between um, the game that they that Melbourne played over there just before the finals is that uh, they had no Kennedy, no Darling. Uh, it's, it's two massive outs for West Coast. I mean, even we beat West Coast when they didn't have those two. Um, so I, I think that those two back in and fit um, is, uh, are massive additions. Well, Pete's being the voice of logic tonight, and I, I think I have to agree with him. Uh, Couldn't agree um, with you more, Pete. Drink up. Couldn't agree with you more, Pete. <laughs> drink up. <laughs> everybody take drink a drink chug. Up. I'll have one myself, thanks. <laughs> what do you think of Burton, mate? Yeah. Oh, he, you know he's a dickhead, mate. You <laughs> know it. Yeah, West Coast for me. Uh, I think Melbourne will give it a shake for a while, but I think West Coast, uh, like you, Pete, I reckon the addition of Darling in particular, uh, not Darling, uh, Kennedy in particular, uh, will make a big difference to how Melbourne uh, um, uh, match up and uh, I don't think they're going to have enough uh, class to actually outgun West Coast over there. Uh, West Coast comfortably for me. Right, uh, now... Oh, I've got a bit of a dilemma oh, just, because we've got... No, ju- just one thing, Phoenix, on, and I... for the rest rest of you guys, just on GWS, mm. do we all agree that GWS is a much better team this year? Yep, we mentioned that last week. I, I thought they played, yet, even, even though they lost, I felt yeah. that they played with a lot of steel and a lot of grit in that game. And, is, and isn't that interesting that even though they didn't make the prelim. And I think if they had of against Richmond, I, I think there were no chance, um, particularly at the MCG. Um, but it, it's kind of interesting that they finished worse off this year and yet we think they're a better team. Oh, yeah, but it's down to personnel, Nick. It really. It, yeah, Kel- I, Kelly I reckon, killed them. I, I reckon this year will be the making of GWS. I think they showed that last year's loss uh, hurt them a bit. Um, and I think that they're playing with a lot more grit. And we've, we've spoken about it, Pete. You've mentioned it a couple of times. They're playing a lot more like a football team now, if you ask me. And um, I think if they get a fit squad on the park next year, they're going to be very, very, very hard to beat next year. Yeah, they, they, they were slaughtered. Slaughtered by injury. Yeah. Anyway, I've got a dilemma because I've got uh, Sweets and Smacks and I've got Conk Wombles. So I... Macca, I'm going to give you two minutes, and then Nikki, I'm going to give you two minutes, and uh, I'll just ah. cut. I'll just cut you off if you go <laughs> over it. Right. Oh yes, I am a scrubby old man. That's what I am, and I really don't care who knows it. I don't... Go for it, Macca. Two minutes starts now. Right. Well, I was slapping them right, left, and centre with the SAFL, so that's part of it, but. Uh, talking Footy. Did anybody watch Talking Footy? Luke Darcy. He uh, started off by talking about the whole fiasco. Uh, he mentioned that Woodville West Torrens, coached by Josh Carr, and then and spoke about it as if we had to... Well, not we. Woodville West Torrens had committed the offence. Um, and at the end of it, Sam McClure says... And God help me, Sam McClure. He says, so, yeah, so they should take it away and uh, give it to North Adelaide, eh? 
and I thought to myself, they have no idea what happens here. They don't really care. What a mob. And that's me done. Um, you've got time to spare there. Oh, Pete. Fantastic. Right, Nicky, you've got precedent. Well, that, Macca did that. Well, Macca what... did that in 37 seconds. Yeah, that's because we'd already done the SNFL stuff. Come on. Because I think if, Where if we, we had the SNFL. This is part Where's of your two music? minutes. No, you're 20, 20 oh, seconds in. Right. I just think Neil Mitchell from 3AW is a cockwomble this week for suggesting that um, they need to show the Melbourne fans on the big screen over at um, Jermaine Stadium because those poor, you know, those Melbourne players, they're going to feel all hostile and, and we need to, you know, take away the effect of the, the West Coast home ground. They freaking earned their home ground, right? Let them have more fans and more noise. Come on, Nick, he's a Victorian. Shut he's, up, he's, he's a Victorian presenter. Yeah, but Channel Victorian. 7. Channel 7 were going, oh, yeah, we're looking into it. Come on, Nick. Fuck off, Channel 7. Come on, <laughs> Sorry. Can we do better? And I, I, and uh, the commentators on the weekend just fapping about, you know, the whole idea of a Richmond Collingwood final, etc. Yeah, whatever. Is that I think it? Neil Mitchell. So where are you well, going to, Nicky? Well, there was the there was the NFL, but we've done that, and I was going to do the talking footy things, but Macca did that. So then I've just got two done. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was pretty <laughs> underwhelming. <laughs> hey, you want a short, sharp, and shiny? I'm yeah, you got it. I still Don't want complain. decent bloody. Co- oh, whatever. I'm just, I'm proud that I've got, 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 got it done in two and a half minutes. So no, who no, got there, the... was like the whole, there was a whole cake and corns and the other stuff, but I don't like talking about no, that. No, 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 Baxies, we're done now. I'll tell you what, I, I, I will uh, just want to uh, give a little bit of news, which uh, I found out this week, which was uh, incredible because I'd never, ever heard of this happening before. Did you guys realise, do you understand, did you realise that when there is a, a match scheduled interstate, that if you want to fly from your city to the city where the game's being played, do you realise that the airlines jack up the prices? It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> really? Isn't no. that incredible? Who would have thought that? that? Actually, that's actually been happening. Who came up with that scoop, Pete? Oh, <laughs> all those poor know, Melbourne supporters, you know? It's all, ac- it's pay, all across paid the... They've all their lift fees. It's all across the know, Melbourne so... media, mate. And I tell you what, I bet you those horrible people in Perth, I bet you they put, put up the hotel fees as well. Oh, they would have been. They're all over it. It's got Perth written all over it, Pete. You know that? Absolutely They're just outrageous. doing that to be mean to those poor Melbourne supporters because it's their year. It's well, outrageous. Well, the other... The other problem that Melbourne supporters are going to got, do you know how bad the quality of quince paste is over in Perth? Like, they don't... <laughs> they don't have Maggie beer? Well, no, they've, no, they've only got Maggie beer, like Woolies brand Maggie beer. They need they need some... <laughs> Maggie beer, beer is not like Woolies. Yeah, well, you buy Maggie beers at Woolies. If you can get your quince paste at Woolies, it's not top quality stuff. Oi, it's Maggie beer. It's All right, we're, this, yeah. is, this is going nowhere. Uh, thanks very much, everyone, <laughs> on the Spreaker chat for uh, taking part tonight. It was a, quite a quiet night, only 200 comments. Uh... I, I feel like uh, it was a bit down on Spreaker and you all got to have a look, good hard look at yourselves, to be honest. Uh, also, thanks to Darren and others on the Facebook chat. Darren wrote a fantastic little comment there uh, regarding the SNFL situation. So thanks for your input there, mate. Uh, as you always, say, mate? yeah, you go to the Facebook page and, uh, and read it. It's AFL Crowcast on Facebook and also AFL Crowcast on Twitter. Um, you can also obviously go and have a look at, at our uh, aflcrowcast.com website, which is currently being upgraded. Uh, you now have the ability to write an article if you register on our website. So go ahead and register and uh, have your say on our website and your articles will be featured. Um, and look out for some more uh, upgrades as we go along through the off-season. Thanks, Donkey. You've whacked a heap of stuff on that, haven't you, haven't you mate? Uh, what? You've whacked a heap of stuff on that website recently, haven't you? Yeah, the website's gone crazy. Yeah, um, I, I went I went there the other day and it's just got Twitter handles and feeds and news going everywhere. So it's actually, I was like, this is this is top stuff, Phoenix. So I want to give you a sweet. Oh, thanks, mate. Uh, 
Yeah, basically, yeah. we got all pretty much. You could you could go to AFL Crowcast now and pretty much get all your AFL and Crows news in the one spot because uh, we got uh, news feeds coming in from all over the joint um, there. So, uh, and there'll be much more happening in that space. In that space, thanks, Pikey. Uh, over the off season, uh, so keep checking back every now and again. Thanks, Donk, for your sweet and for joining us tonight. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks, Maka. And, of course, thanks, Peter J. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we will see you again on Tuesday next week for Tuesday Night Live. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night, all. Good night, all. I'll see you, Maka. Bye.